Welcome to the Melbourne Cricket Ground. For those joining us for the first time, round 12 clash between Richmond and the West Coast Eagles. 14th and 16th on the AFL ladder. An important game. King sends it inside 50. Rebo under this. Can't get a fly at it. Back of the pack. This could be the perfect start. Strolls in, kicks the goal, and Richmond are away. Hands it off, Daniel Connors back into the lineup, kicks inside 50, he's got it again. He's not the Danny Minogue of the Rewald family anymore. For two in 60 seconds from 48, strikes it nicely. Splendid. Inside 50, and here he's again. This is not good enough. Directly out. Jack Rewald, three goals, West Coast Eagles yet to score. Tuck to Edwards, to White, he gets to Rewald, he's in the move, he's got this, he's up. <laughs> How about this for a start? Now look at his kick for his fourth. There's your leader in the race for the Coleman. Farmer inside to Edwards. Okay, long bit Rewald here. Rewald's in a one-on-one, -on -one. about to go, Schofield with him. <laughs> Rewald too good. This is for number five. <laughs> five goals in 19 minutes. I do remember the first quarter, I remember every time the ball had gone in there against he or his opponent, and I think that at one stage they had even put another one back, so it was two on one and he just couldn't be beaten. I remember in the first quarter he just had it on a string and the crowd were getting very excited and that just built and built and built. The crowd sounded like it was 100,000, it was probably only 40,000, but they, I think they were more excited than we were. Rebel, two to beat here, yes, yes. wins! There's six contested marks. He's that ball. blossoming before our eyes, Jack Rebolt, for number six. And that's a dart straight over the umpire. Rewalt's lead is to the pocket. It's a floater. And he gets the free. Rewalt's ball. This is for number seven for the first time in his AFL career. And probably not the last. Edwards sends it in the Jack Rewalt direction. Can't get a jump at it. In front of the pack. Tries to throw it. Could go off the ground. Newer with the palm down. Free kick out of this. There's a hold. And it's going to Rewell. You see Scope very well picked up. That's definitely a free kick. Holding onto his left arm. That's just the pressure of playing on a, a guy who's white hot. At the moment, white hot for. There'll be a huge roar. There's a new king of Tigerland. But they've got a new hero down there at Punk Road now. And his name's Jack Rewell. Nine. Penny kick ten. Question. Jonathan Brown in 07 at the Gabba, the last player to do it. Rewalk has a chance here. Collins, Tark, sends it to the goal square. It's it high. Rewalk, Schofield. Rewalk! <laughs> they haven't had a lot to cheer in the last few years, the Richmond fans. For number 10, the new hero has double figures. I sort of just lost track and didn't realise why the crowd had gone so wild and Jack being Jack celebrated a little bit with the crowd before he came to the boys but uh, once it clicked it was, it's a pretty impressive uh, feat for someone to kick ten of their own goals in a game. The passion and the raw emotion from the crowd being able to enjoy something like that. Look at the Richmond faithful, we've had a few lean years, every Richmond supporter is out of their seat applauding the new hero, Jack Rebock. Because I was coaching on the boundary, you don't really have a, a recollection of how many goals players have kicked or how well players are going from ground level. And I remember an enormous roar, I think, after Jack kicked a goal and didn't think much of it. But then um, the murmur, I think the ball went down the next time to, after from a centre bounce or something like that. And Jack marked it. And there was this enormous roar or anticipation of excitement. I said, I'm not quite sure what's going on. I thought there was a fight at the other end of the ground. But someone said, no, he's lining up for his tenth. Watching the Richmond Fable stand up was one. It was just amazing to see the crowd here. Oh, that's fantastic. You can tell when someone's on, then no matter who you put on him or what you do, um, they're going to find a way to kick those goals. Yeah, it was a pretty ordinary day because I think I was playing forward pocket up the other end, so I was 
I uh, spent a lot of time running up to the centre and then running back to my position. When you're on top of a side, it's, it's always good fun, especially if one of your teammates is really dominating a game. It's, um, you sort of just want to give them the ball because it seems like everything they touch turns to gold on that day. felt like every time the ball was going into a 50, it was just landing in his hands and I mean, he was jumping over blokes and taking pack marks and kicking them from everywhere. It was very impressive. I probably The thing that I remember the most is feeling sorry for the two blokes he was playing on as a defender. Uh, I think he kicked at them majority of them on Scully. I'm not sure if he'll say the same, but he says a certain, probably half of them or a small number of them, uh, but it might be majority, if not all of them. I had uh, front and centre seats for that one. Rewalt's in a one-on-one, -on -one. about to go, Schofield with him, Rewalt too good. Still a bit of a contentious issue at the club. I think he kicked his last five on me. Um, Eric McKenzie thinks that he possibly kicked his last six on me, but I know for a fact his first war in the first quarter was Eric McKenzie's responsibility, not mine. He's got this, he's up. <laughs> How's this for a start? We came here at quarter time, I remember, and our backline coach at the time was uh, pretty unhappy with how things had gone. He was convinced that Eric wasn't switched on from the start of the game because he'd seen him earlier that day with no shoes on walking around in the hotel and I, I distinctly remember at the quarter time break our backline coach just going, mate I know you weren't switched on, I saw you with bare feet walking around, you got a body switch on and then uh, yeah, I got put on in for the last three quarters. Schofield, Revolt, Schofield, caught by Revolt. I did my bit, I reckon I stopped him from kicking 20, let's just say that way. <laughs> Revolt, Schofield, Revolt! I was obviously playing on ball but spent a fair bit of time trying to drop back into some space. We were having a few words to each other just about, he was saying he'd sit on my shoulders and i say he couldn't get anywhere near him and one time he'd do it and then he'd kick his eighth and then the ninth and then where was I and why didn't I stop that and so yeah it was a pretty eventful day certainly for him anyway. He's always got something to say though and that's great. I don't think you want characters in footy. Um, keep him as long as you possibly can. I think a lot of people would think he's over the top and uh, could come across quite arrogant, but he's, he's fantastic. He gets around the ball. The 10 goal hero, Jack Rewald, and the 49 point winning heroes, the Richmond Football Club. It was, a, it was an interesting one because I remember I sort of got in a little bit of trouble at the end of the game. I think Fox Footy were trying to go out to to Jack and um, I sort of sent the runner out and I said listen don't let Jack speak to the, to the media let's just let someone else do it today and it sort of caused a little bit of an eruption and I remember one of the commentators who will remain nameless thought it sort of wrecked his day and I thought give me a spell feeding him. Well I'm a little disappointed to be honest I have to, I have to say that I'm disappointed Jack Rewalt when they the interview in big time sport around the world the superstars Kobe Bryant and Kobe they don't do that. Certainly anyone who can kick 10 goals has had a huge impact on the game. You'd say most things that went in his area he won. I was taking great grabs, but also quick off the ground and putting them straight through. It's not a memorable one because you're on the back end of it, but um, you know, I'll never forget it. Once again, as coaches, we try and play down the individuality of the game, so to speak, but, but kicking 10 was a pretty, pretty special moment.